Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, and I'm back again with another game from back in the day. And this one's going to be from 1927. It's going to be the 1927 Washington Senators against the 1927 Detroit Tigers. Should be a good matchup. The um, Tigers of 1927 were 82 and 71, and the Senators were 85 and 69. And of course, pitching for Washington is going to be the big train, Walter Johnson, and he's going to be going up against Earl Whitehill of Detroit. Now, I want to put a, a disclaimer up here right up front. Probably going to butcher a few of these names, maybe quite a few. So if you want to let me know, just respectfully let me know. But I mean, it's not like I'm running a season and I need to know these guys' names every time. So we're going to get started with Detroit uh, or with Washington batting against Detroit's Earl Whitehill. Earl Whitehill in 1927 was 16 and 14 with a 336 earned run average. And he's going to start pitching against Goose Goslin. And he gets a 3-7, which is a ground ball to first base, and he's out. That brings up Ozzy Bluge. He gets a 3-10, which is a ground ball to the pitcher, and he is out. Whitehill throws him out, and Muddy Rule is up, and he gets a 5-6, which is a fly to left. And Washington goes very quickly, 1-2-3. And we go to the bottom of the first with Heine Manouche up for Detroit against the big train, Walter Johnson. He gets a 6-4 and he flies out to center field, one away. Bob Fothergill gets a 3-9 and that is a single and it's the first hit of the ball game. Um, so that's a hit for Detroit. And we put him right here. Harry Heilman is up. Harry Heilman gets a 4-5 and that's a strikeout, two away. And Jack Warner comes up, and he gets a 4-8, and that's a triple 1-13, to 13 or a double. And that's going to be a double, with runners at 2nd and 3rd, and 2 down. And uh, let's see, are they going to send Father Gill 1-11? to 11? No, they are not. So, runners at 2nd and 3rd with 2 down. And that was another hit for Detroit. And Johnny Noon is up, and he gets a 6-7. That's a ground ball to the second baseman. And the second baseman for the, uh, the Washington Senators is a 2. And that's going to be a 7 and probably is an out. I'm just going to verify it just for sanity's sake here. But yeah, he's out. So they don't get any runs. They threatened, but they didn't get any runs. And we go to the top of the second where Washington is now up again. And this uh, time it's Tris Speaker. He gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball to the shortstop. And I believe the shortstop for Detroit is a 1. He is indeed a 1. And that's a 5. He's out. Joe Judge is up. That is a 1-6, and that's a pop-out to first. Two away, two down. And Sam Rice, the right fielder, is up, and he gets a double one to 18 or a single. And it is a double, and it is Washington's first hit of the game. And up steps Bucky Harris, and he gets a 1-7, which is a pop-out to third. Probably going to be a low-scoring affair here, you would have to think, between uh, Whitehill and the big train, Walter Johnson. And by the way, uh, Walter Johnson actually did not have one of his better years this year. He was in 1927. He was 5-6 with a 5.08. Charlie Garinger is up. He gets a 6-8, uh, which is a fly to center, one away. Larry Woodall. Gets a 2-5, and that's a walk. So Larry Woodall is aboard for Detroit. 
and Jack Tavet Taverner, Jack Jackie Taverner, the shortstop gets a three six, and that is a ground ball to the shortstop, and it's a double play. So they are out. We go to the top of the third, and this is going to be the big train, Walter Johnson, and his pitcher hitting card, and he gets a three ten, which is a single. So he could hit because he had the number eight hitting card for pitchers. Bobby Reeves is up. He gets a 2-8, which is a strikeout. One away. Goose Goslin back to the top of the lineup. Gets a 5-8. And that is a strikeout. Two away. And Ozzie Bluge gets a 4-8. And that is a single one. And that is actually a lineup to second. So no runs come in. And now it is White Hill's turn to hit, and he's going to hit against the big train. We go to the bottom of the second, or the bottom of the third, and it is a 210, which is a strikeout. He was a three pitcher hitting card, so not quite as good as Walter Johnson. Heidi Manouche is up, and he gets a 5 9. That is a single. So there you go. He's aboard. One out. Father Gill up. He gets a 3-4. That is a ground ball to the shortstop. Double play. No runs for Detroit. This is just like the uh, other old time game from the 30s that I played. That was a low scoring affair, I believe. And so is this. Muddy Rule gets a 1-4 and that is a walk. So he's aboard. And uh, Tris Speaker is up. No outs, man at first, 5-4. That is a fly to center. I'm pretty sure he's good, and he is a Charlie Garringer, so he's a one. And that's going to be an out, one away. Joe Judge gets a 4-4. Four, four. That is a single. So now they have two runners on, and uh, that's Washington's second hit of the game. Two on, one out, Sam Rice up, he gets a 6-9, that is a strikeout, two down. And Bucky Harris is up, and he gets a 5-8, and that is a strikeout. They keep hitting around that single at 7. And no runs, we go to the bottom of the fourth in a scoreless game between the 1927 Washington Senators and the 1927 Detroit Tigers, and Harry Heilman is up for the Tigers. And he gets a fly ball to center. One away. Jack Warner gets a 2-5, and that's a strikeout. Two away. And Johnny Noon. And Johnny Noon gets a walk. So he's aboard. And Garinger's up. He gets a 6-7, and that is a ground ball to the second baseman. He is a 2. That is a 3. Three and two at second is an out. No runs. Again, that's the story of both of these teams' lives in this game. We go to the top of the fifth, a 0 0 game, two hits apiece, no errors for either one, and Walter Johnson stepping in. 4 7, he hits the ball to second base. Second baseman, I believe we've been through this, is a two. Is that correct? He is a one. He's actually a one. And that is going to be an out. One away. Bobby Reeves is up. He gets a three eight, which is a triple one to five or a single. And that's going to be a single. So that is another hit for Washington. They now have three hits. Goose Goslin up, man aboard. And he walks. So now Washington has a little bit of a threat going. Two on, only one out. Ozzy Bluge up. He gets a triple one to 16. And that is actually going to be a double and knock in a run. So they get another hit and they get a run. And they may not be done yet. There's only one out. Muddy rules up. He gets a 6-4 on White Hill, and that is a walk to load up the bases. 
And now with the bases loaded, definitely they are not bringing the infield in. They're going to hope for the double play. Tris Speaker is up, not a guy that you want to hope for the double play on. And he actually walks to force in the second run. And now Joe Judge is up, and he gets a 111, which is a pop to second, two away. And Rice, Sam Rice is up, and he gets a 5-8, and that's a strikeout. But Washington does strike for two runs. As we go to the bottom of the fifth in a 2-0 game now, Washington ahead, and it's up to the big train to hold that lead. Woodall gets a 5-4. That is a ground ball to the third baseman. The third baseman is, let's, I don't think he's very, oh no, he is. He is very good. He's a one. And that is an 11. And I'm believing that's an out, and it is. Jackie Tavener gets a 5-5. Five, five. That is a ground ball to the second baseman, two away. And White Hill is up. They'll let him bat. I mean, he's not pitching that bad. And he gets a single. He actually gets a hit. And that is the third hit for Detroit. And Heidi Manouche gets a 1-6, which is a double one to two or a single double asterisk. That's going to be a single double asterisk. So now runners are at the corners. They got their fourth hit right there, but there's two down and Father Gill up and he gets a 4-4, which is a walk and loads the bases up. So Detroit has a similar situation to what Washington had last inning. Bases loaded, but with two down and Heilman up and he gets a 4-4 and that is a walk. Johnson walks in a run and makes it 2-1. And Jack Warner is up. And he gets a 4-6, and that is a fly ball to the right fielder. So, Detroit struck for their own run in the fifth inning, and it's 2-1. to one. Bucky Harris is up for Washington. He gets a fly to left, one away. That brings up the big train, has a hit today, and he strikes out there, two away. And Bobby Reeves gets a 2-12, which is a strikeout. So, no runs for Washington. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Detroit only down by a run. And Johnny Noon up, and he gets a 3-6, which is a ground ball to the third baseman. One away. Charlie Garinger gets a 3-8, which is a walk. Keep forgetting to take those guys down between innings. Larry Woodall gets a 4-9. That is a double. Just a plain double, and you got to wonder how long they're going to stick with the uh, bad version of the big train. And yes, apparently there was one. So runners are at second and third with only one out. They are going to bring the infield, infield in for Jackie T Tavener. He gets a 5-4, which is a ground ball to the third baseman. I believe he's a 1 we've already established, and he is a 1. And where is my dice? There it is. And that's a 17. 17 and a 1 is an out, two away, and I believe that they got the run, the runner at the plate, the other guy went to second, and then this guy was safe at first. So, two down, runners are at the corners, and the pitcher is up. And for right now, this is still close enough a game, they're going to let him hit. And he strikes out. That's a decision, career decision there made by Detroit, but it didn't didn't work. We go to the top of the seventh. Goose Goslin is up. These guys are off the bases. 2-9 is a home run, 1-3, or a double. And that's going to be a double. And that is another hit for... Washington. Oh, I put it air accidentally. Blues is up. He gets a 1-7. That's a line out to short. One out. Muddy Rule gets a 6-5. That is a fly to right. Two outs. And Tris Speaker, 3-10 is a line out to second base. So no runs come in for 
the Senators in the seventh. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Heine Manouche gets a 6-6. Six, six. That's a line out. Shortstop. Father Gill gets a 5-10. That is a single one of 13. And that is going to be actually an out. Line out to first base. Two outs. And Harry Heilman is up. And he gets a 3-4, which is a home run. And Detroit ties the game. They get to the big train for a home run. And we have a tie score with Jack Warner up. And 6-7 is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman is a one or a two, maybe a one. It's Bucky Harris. And that is a 15. That might be an on by error. It is. And that's an error for... Washington, which I erroneously already recorded, so I'll just keep the air there and not add to it. And Noon is up, and he gets a 6-8, and that is a fly ball center. So, we go to the top of the eighth in a tie game. Washington up, Joe Judge, and maybe right now it's not looking so bad to have kept Earl Whitehill in to hit that one time, because he is pitching well. 5-8, that's a strikeout, one away. Sam Rice gets a 1-7, which is a line out to first, two away. And Bucky Harris gets a 3-12, and that's a fly to right. No runs come in. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Detroit can get a run here and then hold them in the ninth. That's going to be the game, but let's see. Charlie Garinger gets a 3-6, and that's a ground ball shortstop, one away. Larry Woodall gets a 4-6, which, which is a fly ball to right field, two away. And Jackie Tavener, he gets a 6-11. That's a fly left. The left Fishington is a 2, and that is an out. So, no runs in for Detroit. We go to the top of the ninth. They're going to lead off with the big train, or are they? They might pinch hit here. Okay, it's going to be Earl McNeely. Going to pinch hit Earl McNeely. The backup catcher. 6-9, he gets a strikeout. All of that just to get a strikeout. And that brings up Bobby Reeves. He gets a 6-8. That is a fly ball to center. Two outs. And Goose Goslin gets a 6-7. That is a ground to the shortstop. The shortstop for Detroit is... We've probably been through this. In fact, I believe he's the one, right? A1. And that's a 19. And he makes the play. So, uh, that brings up for Detroit, Earl Whitehill. And you know they're going to pinch hit for him. That's going to be Lou Blue. Lou Blue is pinch hitting. Had a great on base percentage that year. The guy walked a lot. And he grounds out to the pitcher. So that's one out. And then that brings up Heine Manouche. Heine Manouche gets a 5-4. And the new pitcher, by the way, is Bump Hadley for Washington. And that is a fly ball to center. Let's check the center fielder. And he is a 1. That's Tris Speaker. And that is a 19. Let's see what that is. That is a roll again. And that's a 17. And that's an out. And then that brings up... Bob Fothergill. And he gets a 1-8, and that's a ground ball to the shortstop. No runs in for Detroit. We got some extra baseball here. We got some free baseball. Top of the inning. Now, the new Detroit pitcher is going to be Lil Stoner. In 1927, he was 10-13 with a 398 earned run average. And Ozzie Blueish is going to bat against him, and he flies out to center. One away.
A muddy rule gets a 1-4, and that is a walk. So they do have a man aboard with one out. Tris Speaker. Tris Speaker gets a single one of eight. And it isn't. It's actually a line out to first base. Two away. Man at first, two down. Joe Judge gets a 5-8, and that's a fly to center. So no runs come in in the top of the 10th. We go to the bottom of the 10th, and uh, we have Harry Heilman up. And he gets a 1-4, which is a ground ball, pitcher B, one away. Jack Warner's up. He gets a 3-8. That's a triple one to seven. And that is actually just a single. So he gets a single. There's a man aboard with one out for Detroit and Johnny Noon up and he gets a 412. That's a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop, I believe, is what is he? Is this the one that has the one? I think it is. I keep saying that, and I think it is. No, he's a two. Must be the other team. So seven and two, that's going to probably be a double play, though. And it is. So no runs come in. And we go to the top of the 11th. Charlie Garinger is up. Still against Hadley. He was a starter reliever, so he can do this. Five, six is a pop out to first. One away. Woodall is up. He gets a 4-8. That is a walk. So Woodall is aboard with one out. Tavner is up. He gets a 1-6. That's a single. So they have runners at the... In fact, this is... Um, is this already? Uh, the pitcher is up. He's a 1. That's a 3-6. So let's see what a one gets. And it is a double play. So Washington as we go to the top of the twelfth. He gets a five three. That's a ground ball back to the pitcher. He is understood to be a two defensively, which is not good because I think that's an error. That's a two base error. So you got a guy at second with no outs now. And that's an error for Detroit on the pitcher. And Bucky Harris up. And he gets a 2-4, which is a ground ball B. So that's one out. And the new and the pitcher is Lil Stoner, and he's a one. Or wait a minute, no, the pitcher is Bump Hadley, and he's a five. So he is a five. They're going to let him hit. The five pitcher hitting card is pretty good. And he gets a 410, which is a fly ball to the center fielder. And he is a, he's maybe a three. He is, in fact, a three. So this could be, this could be huge. 12 and three. I don't like the looks of that. It is a single and an air batter on second. So a run comes in for Washington. And it's 3-2. With one out and a man at second. And Bobby Reeves up. And he gets a 3-8, which is a triple one to five or a single double asterisk. And now they're just now they're just laying it on. That's a hit for Washington and another run. And Goslin comes in, and he gets a home run, one to three, or a double. Now they're just going bananas. No run score there, but it's runners at second and third with one out, and the infield will definitely come in for Detroit. They can't allow any more runs. Oh, and I just gave them a run. Well, 5-5 five, five is a strikeout, two away. And Muddy Rule gets 3-8, which is a walk and loads the bases. 
And Chris Speaker is up, and he gets a 1-6, which is a single double asterisk, and not only scores another run, but uh, scores even a, or a run after that. So now Washington has just gone completely bananas here. And you've got 2-9 uh, fly ball by Joe Judge that ends the inning, but not before Washington scores their sixth run, and we go to the bottom of the, I believe this is the 13th, maybe the 14th, not even sure. And that brings up Heine Manoush. He gets a 6-11 right field, a fly ball to right. And the right fielder is uh, let's see, where, who is the right fielder? Oh, he is, uh, that's Sam Rice. He's a three. Two and three. That's going to be big. That's going to be a double. So, lead off double and Father Gill up. Of course, they have to get a lot of runs. Single, though, they're not going to send anybody because they need base runners and runs. They don't need to be forcing a run home and get a guy thrown out. Heilman is up. He gets a 4-4, and that's a single, knocks in a run, now it's 6-3. Jack Warner is up, he gets a 6-7, that's a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is a 2, I want to say he's a 2, he is. And that's a 13 and a 2 at short. That could be a double play, though. And it is. Moves a runner to third with two down, I believe. And that brings up Johnny Noon. And he gets a 4-6, but that's a single. And it knocks in the fourth run for Detroit. Both teams just going completely bananas here in the 13th or 14th inning. Garinger. Gets a 3-7, and that ends it. That's a ground ball to the first baseman. And Detroit ends up losing 6-4. The runs were just too much in the, I believe it was a 14th inning for Washington. And so that's your final score, 6-4. The 1927 Washington Senators defeat the 1927 Detroit Tigers.